Parker. So let's go. The killer claims to have an IQ of over 150. If I'm chipping away at that timeline, it can be exculpatory for you, meaning that it excludes you as a suspect. I know, my vernacular is very good, so you don't have to explain your words to me. Little does he know, he's about to show exactly what you shouldn't do in a police interrogation. I wasn't in the car when I went to the Starbucks. Did you lie to me? I didn't, I didn't get you on that one? I feel like I got you. On the 17th of February, 2019, David Wright and his friend Christopher headed to a drug deal on a street corner at 3.40 a.m. Except this was no ordinary drug deal. It was actually a setup for a robbery on both sides. David demanded his buyers hand over their belongings, to which they responded by pepper spraying Chris and running. Seconds later, David drew a revolver from his waist and fired a single shot into Raul Cuadros' chest, killing him instantly. David and Chris fled the scene and buried the revolver in a field and went about their nights confident there was no way they could be caught. But unfortunately, they were almost immediately identified through multiple cameras around the area everything went down in. David was brought in two days later but still believed the cops would never find him guilty and that his extraordinary intellect would carry him through the case. How wrong he was. So, like I said, I mean, it's already been in the media. Four people have been arrested. It's not like we don't know what happened to some extent, you know, but there's always more that we don't know from every single party, right? Everybody has a little piece of the puzzle. We don't necessarily get the truth from everybody. So I would like to hear from you what happened. No, I have no clue because I am just now hearing about this. So, I mean, the whole, I don't know what you're talking about. Is kind of out the door at this point. I got several people who have already identified you. You're identified on video. So it's not a question of that you were there. It's more a question of what led up to this. Because I don't think this is what was actually supposed to happen. Right? So you're just going to play that, that you have no idea what happened because you weren't there. Uh, I was not, no. Not only was David identified by multiple people through CCTV footage, but he also had no alibi and Facebook. Drake story, Drake mentioned you on IG. Why am I even opening my fucking phone, bro? Why the fuck am I opening my phone, bro? messages were recovered discussing details of the alleged drug deal. David was there at the time of the murder. The detective is just trying to uncover the details of exactly David what happened. was there at the time of the murder. But David is having is none of it and has a plan to exactly outplay the detective. was there at the time of the murder. But David is having none of it and has a plan to outplay the detective. was there at the time of the murder. But David is having none of it and has a plan to outplay the detective. was there at the time of the murder. But David is having none of it and it's not helpful to you really to just be quiet and not say anything because what I have are people who are looking out for themselves because they don't want to catch charge. So they're going to dime you off. They're not and looking out for you. So you believe somebody that's going to tell you that somebody else did something to save their own ass? Well, with all the additional evidence, yes. I've been out of jail for all of a week and a half. I've spent almost every minute of it with my girlfriend. As for, did I plan to kill anybody? Did I kill anybody? No, I didn't. So when I look at the GPS on your phone, it's not going to tell me that it's going to tell me that you're with your girlfriend the whole time, that you never were, were over at Jack in the Box. You should. And the only reason you might tell me that is because maybe you didn't take your phone. Or maybe somebody else had my phone. It's been known to happen quite often, actually. My phone has been, I left it in one person's car, and it took me a day and a half to get it back. When was that? Uh, yeah. That was earlier in the week, and then I let somebody use my phone. They were supposed to just go to 7-Eleven to go meet somebody that was selling something to an offer up. And they had apparently seven or eight things that they had to do between then and when they got back to the house. So what day was that? I don't remember. And who was that? 
That was a guy that goes by Memphis. It's a nickname. I think his uh, first name is Joe. Black guy. David's only current alibi and defense is that maybe somebody else had his phone and was at the drug deal instead. He also backs up his story by saying he doesn't remember exactly which day everything Listen, maybe I missed something um, because someone distracted me in the chat. What went wrong in the drug deal that he had to shoot somebody? Oh, they tried to rob him. Occurred on, something that can't directly be proven or disproven. However, for this to be true, that person with his phone would also have to dress exactly the same as David, have access to his Facebook account, and according to his own description of the perp, change the color of his skin. It's not looking too likely. You know why you're here and what's going on. I mean, at this point, you're literally the last person we've talked to. And the only person that has a, an allegiance to you is Chris. I mean, obviously, people are not going to be shy about telling us who was there and who did what. And plus, we have video. There's video at the Chevron. There's video at the Shell. You know that we have all your co-suspects under arrest. All I want from you is a reason. I understand what happened, I just need to know why. The only person I know you have under arrest is Chris. Okay, we have Cody under arrest, and we have Tannehill, what's his name, Ray? Ray. He's in custody as well. We have his car, the car that was used, the car that was at Chevron, in our impound. They are all under arrest. Chris is under arrest because we viewed messages on the phones that organized picking you up. Those same messages from you to Cody. We have them on their phone. We've already viewed them. We have the Facebook communications between Chris and Brianna setting up the deal that happened where you guys showed up at the Chevron and walked down. This is how this plays out. Your girlfriend's going to be dumb enough to provide you an alibi on a murder charge. And then she's going to get roped up in a murder as an accessory. If you care about that person, you have just set her up for failure. And if you want your girlfriend jammed up because you just set her up for it, then that's your choice. No, you can't threaten me with jamming her up. It's not a threat, man. I'm just telling you how it's been that guy. I'm going to go talk to her. She's going to be dumb enough to lie for you. When I got video evidence that you weren't with her. Dude, I get it. Like, you had a quick come up, right? I get it. I don't think you were a stone cold killer. I don't. Like, if you accidentally shot the dude because you flinched or you got scared because of something he did, now is the time. If you come up with that stuff later, nobody is going to believe a word you say. How the f*** would somebody accidentally shoot somebody? Because if your finger's on the trigger, it's called a sympathetic reflex. It happens to police officers all the time. I think that's a term that's been come up with just to cover their asses for shooting people. Well, you can try to make it about that. I'm talking about you. I wouldn't know. Never shot anybody. There is a lot of merit for staying silent in an interrogation like this. In fact, in most cases, it's usually the best course of action, coupled with asking for a lawyer as soon as possible. But here, David is trying to outright deny any association with the case, even though he's been directly linked to it through multiple sources. All he's doing now is making it worse on himself and those around him. But his ego is telling him otherwise. Where do I go from here? I mean, you're the police officer, reverse roles. You're, you're the cop. You're sitting over here trying to figure out if this dude has any remorse for what he did or if he's just worried about getting in trouble. How would you proceed? I'm not worried about getting in trouble. I didn't do shit. I'll just be up front with you. We got Cody's phone. The one that shows your phone number and your address and the communications between you two. Like, I have it. Like, I'm, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just laying it out for you because that's what I met up with somebody doesn't mean that I went with him to go do something. This seemingly plain statement actually carries more weight to it than you might realize. The detective presented David with a piece of concrete evidence that he's saying puts him dead to rights, to which he responds by confirming he had indeed met with Cody, but it went no further than that. Again, it seems like nothing, but now the detective- Turn off your camera filter, you look like an old ass man. First of all, 
I, there's no filter. So th thanks a lot, buddy. Thanks a lot, bro. Number two. Uh, I actually don't even know what to say to that, to be honest. I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's a fucking shitty webcam. I don't know. The fuck? Guys, why are there a bunch of gambling addicts in here telling me to drop the fucking Plinko balls? And I still want somebody to find out how that fucking catfish fake ass OnlyFans account made screenshots and videos. Like, how the fuck did they do it, bro? I need to fucking know, bro. Please, someone let me know. Thank you for the new sub. Dives know this tactic works on David. They can attempt to use the wealth of other evidence they have to slowly extract a full confession from him. Okay, so when did you meet up with Cody then? One, two o'clock in the morning, something like that. On what day? Why would you admit that? Maybe Saturday or Sunday. Okay, where did you meet him? Uh, over by my house. Okay, and who was with him? Dad, I don't know. Was he alone? When I met up with him, yes. So why did you meet up with the dude that you didn't know? Because my friend Chris had asked me to. Okay. And so what happened after that? Well, he had tried to proposition me for a handgun. Mm-hmm. I told him I didn't have one. Okay. So. Did he say why? No. So you guys meet up, you have this conversation, then what happens? He leaves. And how did he leave? Well, I walked back to my house, and he walked back to whatever vehicle he was in. Okay. Why did you leave that out when we first started talking? You think that might be important that the guy under arrest for murder came to your house looking for a gun? Well, if I had given him a gun, then I think that that would be important. Well, it shows his intent. I mean, of course it's relevant to the case, right? People buy guns for all sorts of reasons, man. Yeah, but in this instance, there was a murder. So they went on their way, just... The Cody dude, and did you actually talk to the other guy in the car? How does he know who you are then? Maybe my name was mentioned when they were coming to meet me. But he didn't see you. Unless he seen me when he was parked. But you didn't see the car. I didn't look for the car. Unless I'm coming to meet somebody at their vehicle, I don't ask what vehicle they're in. Well, that's not... And again, don't take this the wrong way. I'm not trying to insult you, but that's not very smart. You're meeting somebody to sell guns, and you're not going to watch around you to see where they come and go? He was referred to me by somebody that. that I trust. Okay. I would still be on my six. So you clearly have a genuine distrust of the police. Is that fair to say? I distrust almost everybody. Being honest with you about the information that we have, trying to give you an opportunity. And I, I, I mean, you've already said flat out you don't believe that, that he has that information. But, I mean, with everything he's told you, you have to know that what he's telling you is true. Well, whatever you have, you've got from people that may not necessarily be giving you information for the best of reasons. So Take the people out of this. Take them out. Who cares about the people? We've got other stuff. Communications and all those types of things, the video. So it's not just that people are telling us this. We're not relying 100% on people. If we did that, we'd be stupid, right? I like to think I'm not that dumb. You take a totality of everything that we have, and we know you're involved. And for you to sit here and just say that you, you don't have anything to do with it doesn't make any sense. I think that you guys have me confused with somebody else. This interview has now been going on for over 40 minutes, and almost no progress has been made. Forcing him into a corner with evidence doesn't seem to be working, and neither does running through- Bro, why are you saying check rumble? What do you mean check rumble? The fuck- what do you mean check rumble? Rumble what? Ru the following on rumble. What? 
it? On what? I don't get why you just said that Rumble followed me. I don't even know what that means, bro. Through the events of the night, or even explaining why what he's doing is a bad idea for him. So instead, the detectives almost completely switch up and begin to threaten him with the consequences of his actions on his own friends. Dude, you're not this guy. You know you're not this guy. If you were, this conversation would be different. Yeah, I'm obviously not this guy. I meant, I'm telling you I meant the I'm dick that is letting everybody else go down for him. I meant that type of guy. That's not you. You have a reputation as being a stand-up dude. I think that whatever those guys did, if it leads to you believing that they were accomplices and accessories and everything like that, yeah, would be their own fault if they fucking hang for it. Really? Even though, hypothetically, you're the person who pulled the trigger? So even though somebody else pulls the trigger, you're good with those guys going down. Your homie Chris, you're good with him going down. And I get it, you know what I mean? Allegiance to these other two dudes. I understand that. But you're good with Chris going down. Getting 20 years off of what you did. You're good with that. If you guys have him orchestrating and setting up something like this, then that's an old thing. It's his own fault that you shot somebody. It's his own fault that you didn't do things the right way, that's his fault? I ain't shoot nobody. He should put himself around better people. Okay. <laughs> you know he's gonna read this, right? I mean, he's gonna have disclosure. It's fine. I'd much rather not see my friend get in trouble, but if by you saying that you guys want me to tell you that I did something that I didn't do. Fair enough. I don't want you to tell me that you did something you didn't do. That's not what I want. I want you to admit to what you did do. Because it's not even a question that you did it. It's it wasn't not. a question. You wouldn't be sitting here trying to get me to admit to something I didn't do. I would, because it's the right thing to do. Like, I'm really trying to... I want to see how this ends. It's not even that much longer. And someone just wrote, How long is Los's pubic hair? Not even... How long are, is Los's pubes? No. You just wrote, how long is Los's pubic hair? Like, one singular pubic hair, bro. There's no way that that guy who wrote that is okay. There's fucking literally no way that that guy's alright. Mentally. There's, no, there's literally no fucking scenario, bro. Answer it. Yeah, okay. Answer Yeah, I'll get a fucking measuring tape and fucking measure my pubes for the fucking serial pervert in the chat, bro. You may not trust the police, but I don't want to jam up all these other dudes on a murder one charge for something you did. Because it's not right in my mind that other people go down for something that serious off of what somebody else did. So I do care about that. That's why I'm talking to you. No. Well. You're talking to the wrong guy. You don't care about those dudes? I'm not saying I don't care about them. I'm saying that you're talking to the wrong guy because I didn't do shit. That's, and not, I think that, that's uh, not what innocent people say. Innocent people that actually give a f Yeah, no. I, you know how many people I've had in that chair, man? Thousands. I don't, you don't give a f You don't give a f That's you. Like, in, enjoy your time. I don't care. Then I don't, I don't have any... Uh, hard feelings for you. I'm just gonna move on to my next case. I just want you to know this isn't about you. This isn't personal. Like you can say you don't care, but I actually think you do. I think you're being. Uh, so, with that said, so uh, you agree that uh, there's nothing more to say, right? If you don't want to talk to me, there isn't. Well, I don't want to talk to somebody that's gonna keep on calling me a liar. I have yet to call you a liar. You've made the implication that I'm lying to you. Because you are. But there's a difference between calling someone a liar and then pointing out inaccuracies in their story. There's a big difference. One is disrespectful, the other is not.
Have right, I been disrespectful to you? Have I been disrespectful to you? Have I insulted you or, or come at you hard or done anything? Other you called me a liar. Yes, you did. You were lying. I'm not lying. Do you not freely admit that you lied to me in this interview? Where did I lie to you? About meeting up with Cody. About being home, not going out at all. And then now you periodically are going out. Would you not concede that both of those things were lies? I don't go farther than a couple blocks from my house on foot to meet somebody very quickly and come back. Okay. That's not so, what you told me. That's you pretty don't much leave your house? Home. I don't leave my house. I was home all weekend with my girlfriend. It's on tape, man. There ain't no secret. Like, Dude, I've got to walk my dog. Of course I leave the house periodically. Okay. But as for did I go anywhere? So you were never at casino in Evergreen, anywhere near there within three or four blocks Saturday night. I just want, want to make sure that we have this down. Let's see. Something. How far is the Starbucks on Evergreen? Which Starbucks? The one on 75th. Yeah, no, Too I'm not far. talking about that. Okay, yeah, then no, I wasn't. Okay. So you're at the Starbucks on 75th? Earlier in the evening, yeah, like 8 or 9 o'clock, something like that. Well, that's not home. Did you lie to me? Can yeah. I, get a, I don't even get a smile out of that one. I didn't, I didn't get you on that one. I feel like I got you on that Blatantly caught in a lie, it might not seem like it yet, but David is starting to get uncomfortable. If it's not been obvious throughout the whole video, the only thing he cares about is his own ego. So now that that's been damaged, he's immediately on the back foot, and it's up to the detective to keep pushing and try to get him to move just that little bit further. Were you with someone? Yeah. Who? Another woman. Who was that? Not gonna tell you that because she'd be very upset. Yeah, but it's a homicide. It can help prove that you weren't involved. How? Because if you're with her, right, that, that gets my timeline tighter. So you're with her from 8 to when? Not very long. So you don't Half wanna, hour at most. So you don't want to tell me who that is? I really don't. Okay. Were you in a car? You're on foot? I rode my bicycle. To 75th? Then how'd you get home? I got a ride from her with my bicycle in the back of her SUV. So there was a car. Did I get you there? I feel like I got you there too. Yeah, Saturday I appreciate night, it. I'm Sunday just looking morning. for honesty, man. I mean, uh, at this point, I'm, I feel comfortable that you have lied to me several times. I'm looking for honesty so that I can rule you out. If you asked where I was Saturday night, Sunday morning. I did. Yeah. So Sunday morning, late Saturday night. Yeah. Doesn't cover eight or nine o'clock in the evening. Oh, okay. So then let's rewind. So Saturday morning to 8 o'clock, where were you? Most of the time. At home. Can you just lay it out for me? Why do I gotta like, pull it out of you? Like, just, I'm asking where you were, man, so I can rule you out. For the first time... Buddy, can someone... Bro, this dude's in the chat spamming my tip burns. When's the next Truth to Dare for 5K? Um, we got some more shit coming, bro, don't worry. Time in an hour he's been sat in the interrogation room, David moves his hand from his lap and adjusts his cap. His hands have also been moving around very slightly and he's been stuttering over his words. His ego has been properly bruised, and he's starting to get very uncomfortable. If provoked, narcissists such as David are likely to suddenly snap in an instinctive effort to prove that they are smart and in control, but often give up all the information the cops need to catch them dead to rights. So the detective keeps up his no-nonsense direct questions to try and get him to crack. The only places that I go, usually, I go to 7-Eleven. Okay. The little Asian market if, you know, we need tubes and tobacco for rolling cigarettes, but that's not very often. Okay. Walgreens. Yeah. But Saturday, did you go to those places? I don't need to know where you generally go. I need to know where you went Saturday. I probably went to 7-Eleven at some point. Any idea what time? I go when I need something or want something. I understand, but that's why I'm asking you. Like, any time? Do you remember wanting or needing something on Saturday? No, I don't, because I don't feel like I need to track every one of my movements and shit like that, because I don't need to have a Loctite schedule of what I'm doing and where I'm going. As so long as I'm a DOC on Thursdays between 1 and 3, and I make my appointments with Ideal Options, then 
doesn't seem like a big deal to me where I go. Okay, unless you're being charged with murder, then it kind of is a big deal, right? Yeah, but if I don't pay attention to and keep track of these things, how the fuck am I going to tell you where I was without lying to you then? Because I don't know exactly when I was there. Well, if you could at least try. Yeah, yeah, I would try. If, if it can rule you out as a suspect in a homicide, I would try. Yeah, well, where I was Saturday during the day has no bearing on where I was Saturday night, Sunday morning. It does. Absolutely it does. Because I can show you wearing different clothes. Or I can show you wearing the same clothes. Right? That's pretty important. Do you agree? I can show that you were with somebody else and not with these people. People change their clothes. People meet other people. Oh, no, no question. But if I'm chipping away at that timeline, right, it can be exculpatory for you, meaning that it excludes you as a suspect. I know. My vernacular is very good. Sweet. So you don't have to explain your words to me. Dude, this guy, like, bro, if you had any chance of, I mean, first of all, you just can't lie to these guys if they already know the truth. You just look pathetic, but like, dude, you're being like an asshole to the cop. Like, Avi, now you just look guilty. Look, dude, you can act like you're uh, upset about that. You're not. So, let's move past it. The fact that you're talking to me like I'm a child. You're not, I'm, I'm not talking liar, to you like a child. Said it. What did I? How did I talk to you like a child? Tell me when. I you think have I've been to explain a word that you're using to me. Most people don't know what that word means. I apologize. Most people are f***ing idiots. Okay, you can pretend you're getting upset about it, but you're really not. No, I'm what I'm getting upset about is you call me a liar. Because you lied. You lied. And I don't actually think I called you a liar. I did say you lied, but I don't think I actually called you a liar. So I'll call up to you now, so we can just move past it. You are a liar. You have lied. Do you want to tell me what happened or not? Couldn't tell you because I don't know. Fair enough. We'll end up close the tape out for you, right, man? Should have done that a long time ago when I said the conversation was over. Oh, okay. Whatever you say, partner. And so it seems the conversation truly was over, as from then on, David refused to even say another word, choosing not to exercise his perfect vernacular anymore. And predictably, he didn't last long in court. Given that he made no attempt to defend himself or cooperate with detectives, he was faced with the maximum possible sentence. David was also already a convicted felon with charges of arson, burglary, vehicle theft, and 35 other misdemeanors dating all the way back to 1999. So in October of 2020, 33-year-old David Wright was sentenced to 40 years in prison without the possibility of parole. Bro. Bro. 40 years?